I don't know. Do it. Uh-oh. Oh, it says we're recording. <laughs> well, wait. But is it going to record us? Is no, it really working? Yeah, no, it's working. It said something about audio. Well, I don't know. Welcome to Sips, Riffs, and Flicks. I'm your co-host, Kevin. Hey, and this is Brandon. And uh, we're back, and better than ever, season two, episode two. I'm going to keep up. Okay. Every time we record, I'm going to name the episode. You can keep up, but I'm probably not, if you're listening on podcast platform, not going to individualized season two episode two on youtube you will see me say season two episode two two. and by the way we have a very special guest with us on this episode (laughs) and it is miss luna claire yeah my my little dog luna claire head is in here because she was standing outside the door on the last episode going "Mm, mm, mm." you know why because she wants a little bit of bourbon (laughs) so now she's in here the mascot, maybe, I don't know. She might make an appearance, but she's getting rubbed at the moment. But if you want to see what this little precious girl looks like, you can find her on Instagram at Luna Claire. Luna Claire Head on Instagram. You should follow her. She posts a lot of pictures of herself. She does a lot of selfies, and Lots. she comments on people's posts and stuff. So She's a sweet girl. <laughs> All, right. All right, so welcome. Season 2, Episode 2. We are going to try... Um, we're actually going to try something, Kevin, that we've, we've had this brand. Yes. And we've had this uh, company and the actual co-owner of the company on our show. Yes. Way back when in our early stages. Um, and like a bunch of goobers, we didn't do our research or read the label on the bottle to know that Iron Root Republic had just won this major award for best whiskey in the world. Yep. Best yeah. best bourbon in the world, 2020. Best bourbon in the world, 2020, right? Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. For Iron Republic. And we interviewed Robert Licorice, who's yep. a co-owner. And <clears throat> looking back on it, sometimes we talk about the episode because looking back on it, it's kind of funny. You know, he was telling us about how that you can find them and all the total wines and all this. And we're like, gosh, I bet that was pretty hard to do. Like, how did you grind that out? And then after the episode, a couple of days later, we found out they had actually won Best Bourbon in the World. So I would assume people want to sell your product. Yeah. So I think, and to be fair, and to be honest, during that episode, I remember clearly thinking to myself, you know, if these guys just keep at it, they oh, just grind. One day. They're going to make it. <laughs> and lo and behold... <laughs> Two dipshits are sitting there talking to the guy who just won the best bourbon in the world. But you keep grinding it out, little fella. You'll make don't, it one day. Hey, listen. <laughs> don't let the man stop you. <laughs> keep at it. So, uh, dummies. One of our uh, contacts and a, a big fan of Iron Man Republic, Andy Byers, um, I met up with him and he gave us this one. And this is their Iron Root Esoteric. The one that we had that won Best Bourbon in the World was the Harbinger, um, Iron Root Harbinger. So, And not the, Harbinger. I, it could be. I think it's Harbinger. I think it is. So this is the Iron Root Esoteric. This is a 97 proof. It's an American whiskey. And the one thing that um, we read about this before we started was it is kind of like their experimental bourbon. Mm-hmm. Every year... Um, The nose of this changes, the flavor changes, and the actual grains they use, they do not let anyone know. It's only, it's a staff only known mixture. And so Kevin, speaking of when you say the nose changes, could you explain to our listeners what the nose is? (laughs) So you would try to comment on that. So that would be like, in my opinion, it's where when you first get that whiff of it. And for me, even when you first get that sip of it, it's like that the beginning, what you catch most, you know, some people are like, it's smoky, it's this, it's that. So um, when they say the nose of it would change, it would mean that from year to year, it would have just a completely different uh, smell and feel when you're first sipping it. How it, Was that a good Yeah, I think so. It, it kind of falls in line about the mysteriousness of the esoteric. Yeah. Which is essentially, you know, something for a small group and only they know. Right. So, you know. Um, it's kind of like a, it's a secret. A only, secret. Only they know the knowledge <laughs> of what's in it. So if you, um, yeah, you did good on the nose. Thank you. If you do not know about Iron Republic, 
we are big fans. Well, I, I say we, I know that I am. I'm a big fan. The Iron Root Harbinger was, I was nervous about it when we first tasted it because it was like a hundred and, it was 115. Proof. It was 115. 115. Yeah. I was really nervous about it. And at the time, that was pretty early on in um, my bourbon drinking and tasting. Yep. And it was the smoothest bourbon that I had had to date. And I was very impressed with it. And it became um, my go to for a while. And then I ran out, and they're out of Texas. We cannot get this in North Carolina. And um, they're in Denison, Texas. They're right? in Denison, Texas. I think the closest you can get it would be wherever, like, your closest total wine would be. But not like Huntersville. Huntersville total wine. Yeah, they have to they sell do. liquor yeah. at the total wine. So, I think maybe South Carolina you could probably get this. Yeah, maybe. Um, I'm sure maybe Frugal would do is that. I don't know. Anyway, Iron Root Republic. You can look it up. You can order it. Um, everything so far has been good. We have not had this one. We're going to taste it with you guys. Um, and Robert is actually the one that taught us yes. how to properly taste bourbon. So in honor of him and Iron Root, we're going to try it on this show. And we're going to hope we get it right. <clears throat> and I will say, Kevin liked it so much that he never let me taste it again. So um, hopefully <laughs> one day I'll get a chance to taste the uh, world's greatest bourbon again. Um, and I will say, for those of you who haven't watched that episode, maybe you're new to the podcast, go back and check it out, watch it, listen to it. And uh, just remember... These two dummies didn't even know. It, here, here's the thing. It would be like sitting down um, in front of like Michael Jordan in like, you know, after he had won, after he hit that jumper in the, in the college, uh, in the NCAA championship. Yeah. And you're sitting on top. like, so how do you feel like your basketball career is going? Yeah. yeah do you think yeah, you just you're I mean, doing well? You got a future in it, you think? <laughs> You know, it seems like you're if really you good. Just practice and work. Real That's hard. right. Jumper seems good. You can leap out of the building. Sky's the limit for you guys. <laughs> Idiots. So it's worth going back and watching that episode strictly to watch us bumble through that interview and talk to the co owner of the world's best bourbon and us and yep. having no clue. And thank you, uh, Robert, for not and embarrassing for, us. And putting up with us. Yep, we appreciate And you. super, super, super cool, nice guy. It, and a great story, too. Knowledgeable, great story. It is a great story, actually. It is. I'm going to go back and watch that one tonight. And as a matter of fact, if you feel like you're going to college because you feel like that's what you're supposed to do to do this certain thing, but you really want to do this and your heart's over there, to hell with this over there. Follow your dreams in your heart. I wouldn't do it myself, but, you know, he did it, and it's all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this one is the Iron Root Esoteric, and it is 97 proof, right, Kevin? Yes. All right. And I think maybe a drop went down there for Luna. There you go, girl. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but I will tell you, as you guys have noticed uh, here in the new season, Kevin and I are being more responsible with our pours. Yes, we are. You, skippy. You don't want to end up in a mashed potato. You dang skippy. So, Iron Root Esoteric. This is our first taste. Again, this is their um, experimental batch. It's a blend. And like I said, it's a uh, different nose every year, different grains every year, uh, different flavors. So, this is... Um, but I will say, can I read the back to them? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So it, this is, this esoteric is an ever-evolving limited edition blend known only to our staff. This is E20 edition, and it is 42-month age. So we would assume this is 2020 for E20, right? Is that what E means? I mean, I don't know what the, well, the E, I guess, is esoteric. But I would assume E20 means this is from the year 2020. But 42 months age. So... It's kind of like ESP and E60. Yeah. But I would, I think this is the one that was released in 2020. Or does it mean addition 20? I don't know. You know I what? Don't. Let's just drink it. All right. So here All we right. go. Uh, Iron Root Republic. Esoteric. It's warm. It's a little warm. <laughs> you know, oh, um, we didn't do... Time out. We didn't do it right. Well, we did do it right. We did. We shot it. We didn't tell it, but we did it right. So your first, uh, your first sample, you're going to take a shot of it. Yep. Which I <clears throat> took a little more than I anticipated. Yep. <laughs> uh, 
Second, we do a chaw. Yes. That's where you put it and in. Then you rinse your mouth out. Chaw on it. Right. We'll rinse your mouth out. Then you sip. Well, we put it. ice on it, I thought. Oh, yeah, we did, actually. We you know what? We don't down. even know our own. <laughs> we don't. Well, here we are, folks. Season Episode two. Episode 74. Still right? dumb. Don't know what we're doing. <laughs> we're going to swish this one. Yeah, this is swish. But I will tell you, that one was pretty smooth. But from the beginning, I know that if I drink a lot of this, I'd call oh, these taters. Taters. <laughs> From now on, just hashtag taters. Should we make a shirt? <laughs> hashtag taters. Hashtag taters. All right, so chaw. <laughs> oh. That second one was better for me. Well, when I breathed in, it um, you can't breathe in soup at the same time. No. Um, I only will say this. <clears throat> It's good. It's good, but it's a little warmer than I anticipated. It's strong. It is strong. I don't, you know, to be fair, I don't really remember the Harbinger, like, that initial taste of it, but I don't think it hit me this warm for some reason. Now, when you say warm, do you mean, like, swallowing it is warm? Yeah, or you, it's like, got that back in that oaky warmness to it there is a flavor charred char there is a flavor in there that i can't here we it's go. not nutmeg <laughs> here we go folks but there's something in there hashtag nutmeg taters uh, <laughs> there's i don't know what that is but i'm definitely ready for this all right let's take a sip of your food line's finest drinking water Actually, you know what? I think we are supposed to sip it again. There is no ice. We like the ice. Yeah, we did. We just like the ice. We put ice in it and drank another one while talking, and that's right. when the taters and, come out. And learning the story. Yeah. All right, oh, so. I think you're supposed to wait a minute. <clears throat> okay, now we're ready. Ready? That one's smooth. That's smooth as can be. Smoother than silk. You know, the crazy thing is like it's amazing what that water cleaning your palate will do to almost like give it, it makes harsh is not the right word. Yeah. But to give it it's just it easier does. to drink. It takes that the edge it off of it so you can off. actually taste the flavors in it. Right. It is that third one, and you know, on that episode, I remember making that same comment, like it is a huge difference. It is a huge difference. That right. Last one, it just tasted like just a flavorful alcohol. It wasn't a... <clears throat> so this is good, but I will tell you how I would... This would be how I would drink it, okay? I'm out on the Blackstone cooking something. Maybe some steak. If you <sighs> hibachi. Hibachi. <laughs> nah, this is not a hibachi drink. Mm, you got to focus too much on hibachi. If I was outside grilling and i wanted to have a nice good drink a little stiff drink just to get me maybe on a friday a little friday <laughs> drink it's been a long week at work and the kids are gone and it's me and the wife the old lady old lady and i'm making her with my <laughs> on the blackstone and i might be listening to motley Crue, but <laughs> Be bad Maybe. as it may. Maybe. Or guns and roads. Whatever. It don't matter. But name this, a hairband. Insert a hairband here. Here. <laughs> Throw me a couple of cubes of ice and a little glass. Pour me a nice stiff drink. This would be what I would drink. <clears throat> and then, once I finish, I would go eat that delicious meal that I just cooked. And uh, fall asleep. But, <laughs> <laughs> but this is like the one that's going to get you into the Get you where you need to go. Agreed. It's the one you don't have to. You don't have to have a lot. You just nope. mix it or put some ice in. I, you know, you know me. I, I would pour this with a little bit of that coke. I would. Really? I would. I did that you, with the Harbinger. We gotta get you away from that. I'm a bourbon and coke guy. I enjoy life. See, I don't. I don't mix anything with anything. You're missing out. I don't. I don't think I am. I don't. I don't think I the am. thing about alcohols, <laughs> I don't like all the carbs. <laughs> carbs are the enemy. The thing about alcohols is that it's all about what you prefer. It is and true. What you enjoy. I'm not going to shame you, but <laughs> I was just sitting here waiting on you. <laughs> no, to I'm shame not going to shame you. 
Um, but no, it, it, you're right. You have to drink with what you you like um, and, and you enjoy. I enjoy um, just on the rocks, you know, two cubes of ice and whatever it is. I don't care if I'm drinking to kill you or Ooh. whiskey bourbon or um you know what you know what i don't drink a lot of though on the rocks i don't drink a lot of this period it's yeah. vodka i don't i like vodka i don't and i don't drink a lot of gin however there is a drink i don't uh, even drink gin period i don't think have you ever had uh they're called table onions and you can have a gin and tonic with table onions that it's not what you think they're actually pretty good um jack cassell down in mount door florida shout out to you for showing me this uh this drink and it's actually a nice little change up um like some bombay sapphire gin with a nice table onion i don't even understand what you're talking about like on the table is there an actual like pieces of onion no so the drink call it, is called a table no neither so, so lost right now so when you order like a like you were a vodka tonic mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. So a vodka tonic for the most part, or a vodka, it'd say maybe club soda because you don't want the sugars in the vodka tonic, comes with lime. You squeeze the lime, now it's a vodka tonic. Okay. Lime, okay? Uh -huh. So if you order a, a gin and tonic with table onions, there's these like tiny little baby onions that look like peas. They're called scallions. Mm, <laughs> I don't know the root origin of the <laughs> onion. They're scallions, I feel like. Go ahead. You know what? <laughs> they could be. I don't know. But they're actually pretty good. And um, and I thought it was nuts when he ordered it. I probably would not even try that. Well, you have to branch out, Kevin. So and, do you um, just... They're in there. I mean, is it, do you have like a little spoon you throw as many in there as you want, or they come with it in the drink? They come with it in the drink. That's how it was served to, to us, to, to myself. When I, I bet it. your breath was awful. Well, <clears throat> luckily... Uh, no one was around who wanted to sample my bread. So, um, <laughs> I mean, I just feel like, oh, y'all by the end of the night was sitting around talking to each other, just like, oh, just onion <laughs> breath and everybody's. But it's, but it's not that type of onion. In my mind, every onion is that type of onion. That's fair. However, have onions. you ever tried pickle onions and vinegar? Like you let well, red no. onion soak? No. Why okay. Would I do? do you like anything pickled? No. <laughs> why would I? I don't know why, why anybody be? would. You don't like anything pickled? No. 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 Well, I no. can't. I can't. So if you're at a bar and there's a big jug of pickled deviled eggs sitting on a bar, you're going to eat one. Okay. Um, the answer to that is no. Okay. Because I don't know whose hands been gomming around in that bowl to get like the pickled pig feet or the pickled onion. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. However, I like pickled onions. I like pickled beets. Love pickled beets. Uh -uh. You don't eat beets? No. Like no. never, not at all. I, By the way, Luna is trying me. to like go up my pant leg. I can't believe you're asking these questions like I'm abnormal. Like you don't eat beets? What? No, who eats beets? I don't know anybody that eats beets. A lot of our listeners. The pickle beets are the best. Mm. And by the way, Village Inn pizza love that you put your beets out on the salad bar love them and your baby corn i'm always afraid somebody's gonna dip a pickled beet out and drip the juice into something else on the salad bar and it bothers me because it might make its way into my salad so have you ever tried a pickled beet no have you do you like vinegar no you, nothing in vinegar no i don't understand you no i really don't i pour a little bit of vinegar in my spaghetti sauce when i'm making it but but why would you do that to help the flavor. I do a homemade spaghetti sauce. Okay, I've heard of people throwing in sugar to cut down on the acidity. I also do sugar. And vinegar? That's the weirdest. <laughs> oh. And that's the only two ingredients I can give you. It's a secret head family sauce. So anyway, we have diverted. Iron Republic. Yep. Esoteric. What do you think about it? Would you walk across the street for it? Oh, we forgot about that on the other one. Yes, I would I would walk across the street for it, but I would walk with caution. You know what? I would walk sober across the street to go get it and then call an Uber to come back. So, but are you saying you would pick this as like a, a warm up drink? No, no. No, like, like I, think, a, well, I mean, like a one and done, just a, yeah. A, a, for me, this would be a, a, a stiff, a tall pour. Yeah, well, a stiff pour. What would you call that? Just like a, I don't know what. Just even out the, you know, the tension, like, mm -mm. like 
had a rough week, like just a big tall pool. Oh, God. Done, like like if you've had a big week where you had to do like yeah. this presentation or there's like this, all this audit This will be your whatever. sipper at the end. Just to... No, this is the one you pour a big one you, and then like you just relax the rest of the evening. Sounds and like and, if um, we were to walk across the street right now, we might see some folks over there. <laughs> the neighbors over there. Um, <laughs> so I'm with Brandon. I would, um, but it's very good. I would highly recommend it. I like it. It's, uh, it is a little, um, harsh is not the word. It's a little, a little hair on the level. It is. It's a little bit more than like, I would say your mid-level sipper type. Like this one's going to kick kick a little bit in the back of your throat if you're not careful mm -hmm. hashtag taters <laughs> that's right i'm just telling you <laughs> nobody wants to be there but i'm a big fan of iron root republic yes <clears throat> everything i've had so far which is two <laughs> two <laughs> i mean everything we've had so excellent. far excellent excellent no it is very good it's it, i think it has a different flavor it has a unique flavor uh from other things that we've tried and good for you guys because whatever you're doing it's clearly working and i just want to let you know if you keep your nose to the grindstone, this is going to work out for you. <laughs> You're going to make it one day. We promise. One day. And we're pulling for you. You know, what's funny is that story on that episode. I mean, both of us were like, what an awesome story. Like, it was like the American, you know, what everybody strives for. Like, you think yeah. you're going to do one thing, you stumble into something else, and it's your passion, you go for it. And both of us were just like, man, good for you. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and now to see them, at that point, obviously, they had already done great things. But even since then, and now that I'm paying more attention, I mean, you can just see that they just continue to grow and grow and grow. And, and by the way, they sell out of a lot of stuff. They, so yeah, I was going to say that too. So these, um, apparently, I was just told this two weeks ago. When they do a release, they will put out like on social media, e email blast, that something is coming out. Apparently, if you go to the distillery, or they're, I think they're building, they're no, I think right now they're building like a taste room and all. Mm -hmm. But apparently if you go there now, there's like a two hour wait really? to get in there. And they pretty much sell out of every release they have. So good for you guys. So what I'm hearing is since their episode on Citrus and Flicks, we catapulted. We pretty much launched them into, <laughs> launched them into the history books. So if you're another distillery looking to, you know, be catapulted <laughs> into the atmosphere, contact these guys. That's right. All right. So if you have not already, like, share, comment, subscribe. We're on all um, podcast platforms. Yep. We are also on YouTube. So subscribe there and you will get alerts and then you can find us on the podcast. That's right. And we're also on the Facebook and the Instagram. We are actually. under appetite for discussion now that I think about that, but we're there. That's true, though. Yeah. And if you're not an appetite for discussion, man, go check out Appetite for Discussion. Yeah. There's some good new episodes coming up. We'll see you guys soon. Love you. We appreciate you. And uh, I'm Republic. By the way, we didn't give you guys our props. We love your bottle. Andrew. Love the bo best bottle ever. So smooth. This whole 3D thing. Is yeah. The like, label's amazing. You hear that? That feels so good. <laughs> so, anywho, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, all of you out there. Keep doing what you're doing. That's right. See you. See you guys. Hashtag taters. <laughs>